model steam engines and boilers, part 48, planning the mounting base, reprofiling the steam chest and making the hole for the steam inlet. This series called How to Build a Model Steam Engine is for my Patreon supporters only. The full length versions of the episodes in the series contain a lot more information than you're about to see, but this is sufficient to give you a good idea how to do the job. Why is it a good idea to join Patreon? Firstly, you get to see the videos a few months before everyone else. You can download my ebook, The Essential Guide to Miniature Steam, which is completely free. And you can watch the entire series of How to Build a Model Steam Launch, which is over five hours of instructions. I would like to take this opportunity to say a big thank you to all my Patreon supporters. I could not make these videos without your kind help and support. If you're building a Stuart Victoria, by part 35 you should really have had enough information to make all the major parts. The rest of it is quite simple. Because it's been quite a while since I touched this engine and it's been sat in a box on the shelf in the workshop, some of the parts are slightly rusty. This is very light surface rust and easily removed with a piece of Scotch-Brite. And here you see me cleaning up the main bed. I also cleaned up the pedestal that supports the outer part of the crankshaft, and I'll be working on this in the next episode. This build has reached the stage when I need to make the wooden mounting base for the engine. The main engine bed needs to be at the same height from the bench as the pedestal, and as you can see, this is a bit higher at the moment. I'm using some bits of mahogany that are found around the bench. You can clearly see the discrepancy when I position a piece of flat steel bar across the bed. A simple solution, pack up the pedestal until it touches a piece of steel. The steam chest and cover were as I machined them, and you may have noticed that the steam chest cover is slightly bigger than the steam chest. I think it's time to put that right. Also, I have made a modification that isn't on the drawing. On a Stuart Victoria, the steam inlet goes into the top of the steam chest cover. If this was a full-size steam engine, it would be in an engine house, and the steam pipe could disappear up through the ceiling into the room next door where the boiler would be, but this is not going to be the case with a model steam plant. I think that a steam pipe sticking up from the steam chest cover doesn't look very good on a model. And that is why my steam inlet is on the side, and yes, I do know it's not in the middle, and that's because there is a stud in the way. I could have fitted a dummy stud, but no, I want all the studs to hold the steam chest onto the cylinder. At a very high speed, I removed the steam chest and steam chest cover and the studs from the cylinder. I thought a speed increase was in order because this was a very simple and boring job. And in case you're wondering what all these black particles are, on top of the port block, this is moulding sand from within the ports. I think it's a good idea before final assembly to put this part into my ultrasonic cleaner to get rid of every particle of moulding sand. In an earlier episode, I poked out the moulding sand using a piece of wire, but obviously I didn't get all of it. I noticed a little bit of rust on the steam chest cover and this was removed using a piece of Scotch-Brite on the bench. What I'm going to do now is hold the steam chest cover to the steam chest using the studs and some extra 7BA nuts. These nuts are one size smaller than normal 7BA nuts. Here you can clearly see that the steam chest cover is a little bit bigger overall than the steam chest. I'm going to very carefully use my one inch belt sander to make these parts the same size. I've drawn an arrow on the inside of the steam chest cover just so I know which way around it goes on final assembly. Doing it this way seems to be quite logical because it means that the steam chest cover is exactly the same size as the steam chest. This is after I did the job and the mark on the side is a drop of water because when doing this on the belt sander, the part got so hot it was burning my fingers and I had to quench it. If you're building your Stuart Victoria to the drawing, then you can ignore this next bit. Using a piece of mahogany on the one side of the steam chest, I'm drilling a hole which is at an angle so that it misses the stud. This drill bit is 3.1 millimetres or one eighth of an inch in diameter. And here, as you can clearly see, the stud is completely unmarked, but I want to take it one step further than this. I want the hole in the steam chest to be 3 16ths of an inch in diameter. 
but I'm not going to drill it out. I'm going to use my milling machine with a 3 sixteenths of an inch milling cutter, which should go through the hole and give a very good finish. Once again, you can see that the steam chest is mounted in the machine vise at an angle. I didn't have to do that. I just wanted to show that you can do things like this using a milling machine. It also machined the stud. Now I could use the stud like this because it's plenty strong enough, but there's no point. I'm going to fit a new stud in this centre position. And here's a close-up of the steam chest so you can see what's happening. When I think about it, I really don't know why I did this, because the one eighth of an inch diameter hole was perfectly fine, but I just wanted to show what was possible. Now I'm fitting a new stud in place of the one that was machined. The good thing is, the flow of steam into the steam chest is going to be completely unimpeded. This hole in the side of the steam chest is more than big enough. Don't forget, steam engines are gas engines, and therefore the inlets and outlets need to be as large as possible. The question is, was it worth making the modification? The steam inlet flange is still not perfectly in the middle of the steam chest, but at least it's going to look better than this. On this Stuart Victoria steam plant, I do not like the position of the steam pipe from the boiler to the engine. For two reasons. One is, it looks awful. And the other reason being, it's the hottest part of the steam plant, right where you're likely to touch it with your hand. And even though it's clad in string, it still gets very hot. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main steam models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.